George, you were Donald Trump's right hand man for 47 years. And um, this is unbelievable. Uh, some listeners might think now, gosh, Donald Trump, while others say, yeah, Donald Trump. That seems to be an interesting aspect of the path towards success. While on the one hand, you have fans, on the other hand, you have haters. So what would you say is the best way to deal with this um, dilemma? <laughs> That's a very good question, but you size it up. It's not really a dilemma. You figure, who, who's more important? In other words, do I want to be loved or do I want to do things that I have to be done? So if you want to be mediocre, you be loved and you do what people would like you to do, but it's nice and comfortable. If you want to change things because that you're a pioneer, then you have to do it. Understand, as someone once said at that point, you can't make an omelet if you won't break the eggs. Mm -hmm. So, so you, you would do, say, you just go <laughs> and do what you need to do. To do. Yeah, okay. It depends on the personality. Do you, how do you want to change what you're surrounding? You surround the people you do business with. You take the approach. Mm. Be nice, or you can be painful when it's necessary to be painful. And is there anything you would say um, the listeners should never ever do um, if they want to have success? Never ever will do. Yes, give up. Never give up. Never give up. You learn from your failures more than you learn from your success. So when you did something that didn't turn out the way you had in mind, go back and figure out what went wrong. And then not to do it again or that I, that I shouldn't be there. So now just, if you're in a business and you're not, if you're in any type of an occupation, you're not happy, get out of it. Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. I don't care how much you make. So you have to look at where you are in the present, where you'd like to be in the future and how you get there. Okay, I see. Um, and... For me, it seems to be like a difference if you have success uh, or um, being successful. What would you say is the difference and um, how to have both of it? Well, not have success. Success is, is, a, is a, it's, it's a, you can't, it's a, you can't pin down success and you can't pin down successful. It's, it's relative to whatever it is you're doing. You can say, yes, I'm successful, but what does that mean? I made as much money as I thought I could make. I made as much business. I got the relationships that I need. It's, it's, you can't quantify it. You can't, it's, it's not capable of being quantified unless you put an arbitrary limit on it. Yes, I'm successful if I made a million dollars. No, but that's arbitrary. Are you really successful? Or maybe you should have made five million. So you just have to view it based on what you do and what you've chosen for your life. How have you accomplished the results that you thought you wanted to accomplish? In order to do that, you have to have the goal and mm -hmm. figure out what the goal is. And then if you met the goal, yes, you were, you were successful at that point. But it's relative. And what is success uh, uh, to you? What does that mean to you? To me? Yeah. Yeah, personally, as far as success is concerned, I did the, what I thought was appropriate and the best out of whatever situation I was given. Mm -hmm. I did what I thought was appropriate and I did that. And it, sometimes it worked out and sometimes it didn't work out, but I did the best. I gave it the thought necessary and I did what I thought was appropriate at the time. And I won't look back and say I did something wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a lot of questions um, I could ask, but um, maybe it's not the, the one question I should ask. So um, do you have any, any, key secret you would like to share with us uh, where you think this is something you really should uh, know or, or deal with? Yes. Yeah, I kind of do that. So things to deal with. In dealing with people, uh, you know, you have to be able to read people, analyze them. Are they trustworthy? Can I, did I deal with them? Are they fair? Are they, what kind of personality you had? And what I would say this is, I guess, a cheeky, is when I'm dealing with someone, I, am list, I want to listen, not to what they are saying, but what they are not saying. Mm -hmm. Because they're not going to tell me what they don't want me to hear. So they'll tell me what they want me to hear, and I have to say, good, that's what you want me to hear. What is it that you're hiding? And I have to dig that out. So the question, that's the question. Get the truth by asking appropriate questions. 
why yeah. somebody wants to do something, what their personality is, instead of what they say it is. Mm -hmm. And do you have a quest? Uh, do you have an example for that? How how to get it out? Yeah, it's all they do is question. <clears throat> Let's take an example. <clears throat> Suppose you have a house. A house at this point, you want to sell it for five hundred thousand dollars. I pick it. That's a number out of the year. And you say, fine. And I know now you have the house. You want to sell for five hundred thousand. And I would want to say that I want to say, why do you want to sell it? You got to give me an answer. What's the answer? I don't know, but I'll find out. And then that will lead the next one. I want to sell it because I need the money. Well, why do you need the money? What's so I'll, I'll find out. Or, or, now find out whether you pull the number out of the hat or whether or not this is the number that has to be. So mm -hmm. if you tell me I can't take less than five hundred thousand, I say why? What's the magic? You got to give me some kind of an answer. So now once you give me the answer, I can figure out what I want to do with the answer. And then when it comes up, am I going to offer you 500,000? Not, not, no, no way. I'll say, no, I looked at the house at this place. It needs a lot of work. Maybe it's worth 250,000. How about that? And I want to hear what you say. Did you say absolutely not? Or did you say, well, that's too low? If you said it's not too low, we can talk. But what happened to the 500,000? Bye-bye. It's gone. It's an arbitrary number you picked out. Mm -hmm. Unless you said to me, I won't sell it for less than 500,000. I say, why? Give me an answer. I want to know why you say, why are you that point? Based on what you tell me, I'll decide what the, what the next question is. But mm -hmm. I've gotten the, the questions from you, not what I thought. So it's, it's reading, getting the information you need to make an appropriate decision, but you didn't get it the first time around. You don't believe a word they're saying. Other than the fact that, yeah, you want to sell the house. Do you have a recommendation um, how to learn that? Sure. Read my books. Mm -hmm. Which one? Both. Okay. Both. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. No, you learn how to negotiate. People will not tell you when you negotiate, they'll never tell you what they want or how, what they'll agree to. It's not in their best interests. So they're going to lie to you. You have to get past the lie to find out where the truth really is, and that's a fee. Well, you can do it, but understand they're never going to tell you the truth per, uh, the first time around. So you have to dig without being impossible. And you have to learn about the quality of questioning, right? Absolutely. And you have to learn how to read people, what they respond to. Everybody's got a soft spot that they will respond to. You have to find out what it is. And if you make yourself a friendly person, somebody they want to do business with, but also knowledgeable. So you find out as much as you can about the person or the group you're negotiating with, and then you go and start the discussions. And over a period of time, you'll figure out whether or not it was right or wrong, but you have to, it, good negotiation takes time. So you have to be willing to spend the time, assuming that that's an area you want to go down. You may decide, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Fine, you may, in the first meeting, you may decide, I can't do business with that person. So if you find somebody so stubborn, they're not going to move, you may not want to do business with them. Mm. Is, is there a special type uh, of uh, business people you, you wouldn't do business with? Yes. Like stubborn ones? Those that can't be trusted. Those mm -hmm. that are a sneak. They will tell you one thing, but that's not what they want. They're interested in, make, in, in doing something, but they don't care whether it's legal, illegal. They're interested only in the money or the reputation, yes. Mm -hmm. I can't be. I can't be trusted that, that that I'm going to make a deal that I think is fair. They won't treat me fairly. That's not their style. Then I don't want to deal with them. Life mm -hmm. is too short to deal with crooks. <laughs> um, is there anything else you would like to add? But I would like to add. No, good luck. I like your background. What is what is what's behind you? Pioneer or something? I can't see. Yes, it. Uh, pioneer spirit. There you go. So that was already the word you were using. I love it <laughs> because yeah, I think I know, and I like I like it. I what I like there basically. I think that one of the attributes which is lacking in today's world is the pioneer spirit. Mm. The pioneer was somebody who will think I will do something different, not what everybody else is doing. Let me do something different. So I'll give it a half twist 
which makes me unique. Mm. And then if I do that, and I am Pioneer, you can sell somebody that because they've never seen it before. No, it's just not you do what everybody else does. You do something different. And I think that that's, that's worthwhile and something to pursue. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, George, for your You're time, welcome. for You're sharing welcome. all these secrets with us. <laughs> and see you soon. Thank you. See you soon again. <laughs> Bye. Bye now.